questions for you, but okay. obviously <laughs> we have to start with addressing the fact that there has only been one other 58 in the history of men's professional golf. You are number two, the first obviously yes. in Live Golf League history. How yeah. are you feeling right now? <laughs> uh, where do I even begin? I, I pretty much felt like I, I blacked out after I made that putt, so I don't even know what's kind of going on, but uh, it's beyond words. I've been working so hard for a long time, and I knew something special was going to come at some point. I just didn't know when, and uh, the way I played the first round, it was pretty much the worst I could have done. Uh, the second round was like, okay, obviously played really well, made a lot of, a lot of good putts, and then today I just felt everything kind of clicking. I uh, made sure I missed it in the right places when I needed to, and uh, putted beautifully today. Um, there was a point in time where I did think about the 54, <laughs> but I kind of threw that to the waist. So I was like, okay, just, just get under 60 first. Um, but then on 18, too, there was a lot, of, a lot of rain coming down, and so I didn't know how the ball was going to fly through the air and spin. But I was just lucky to kind of keep it a little short and ended up spinning back, unfortunately, but was able to sink the 40-footer just like I work on every single day in my practice. Obviously, the hard work has paid off. I know how hard you've been working, and I know, you know, you're struggling a little bit at the beginning of the year, yeah. and you've been on this rise. You came so close in Spain. Yeah. To win your first live golf event, but then to do it in such incredible <laughs> style, like, tell us a little bit about that. Uh... <clears throat> Did you ever imagine no. you'd be winning at a 57 or 58? No, G going 61-58, I mean, it's a possibility. I never thought I would do it at the Greenbrier. I never thought I'd do it over the course of my career even. I mean, to even back up a 61 is really difficult. So I had something special going today, and I just felt super comfortable over tee shots and was able to play the course the way it was designed. And uh, Jibo was able to keep my head calm. And when I started to get a little nervous, he just kept it fun, light. And uh, we just had a great time out there. Uh, I made the putt on 18. And he goes, what'd you shoot? <laughs> like 58. He was like, 58, what? They didn't even really know. It was, it was a quite funny exchange afterwards, but probably the greatest moment in my golf career. Oh, and did you know uh, that there was only one other 58 in history? Yeah. Did you learn that after the fact? No, I, I've known that. I think it was Jim Furyk, right? Was it? Yes, it yeah, was. Yeah. yeah. And so... Um, being a part of the same agency as well is kind of fun. So my, my agent, Brett, he, uh, he was going nuts over it, and uh, as well as Andrew Whitley. So it was, it was a lot of fun uh, being able to call up Brett and say, and say, I did it, you know, I got under 60, which is pretty cool. So it seemed like a kid in a candy shop, to be honest with you, really. But other than that, I mean, I can't say much more. I really don't know where I am right now. <laughs> Um, somebody sent in a question to ask you that yeah. apparently when you were playing junior golf, you would play on the forward tees to yep. get comfortable with hitting low scores. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so for any junior golfers out there, it's probably the best thing you could do when trying to learn how to score. You go up to the red tees and try and shoot sub-60 rounds. You know, for a good aspiring uh, junior golfer that's trying to be a, a professional golfer, you just go to the front tees, try and shoot under 60. If you can do that, and you consistently do, able to do that every single round you play, get in that comfortable mind of, okay, I'm 10, 11, 12 under, let's keep going. Pedal to the metal. Um, that gets you in a great mindset. And I'm telling you, that tremendously helped today, being able to say, okay, I'm 10 under. Well, I, can't, I can't stop. I got to keep going. I got birdie 17. I got a birdie 8. Let's go. And having that sort of, um, I'm not really going to say it in front of me, like, the cojones? Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> sort of the FU mentality. I mean, just let's go. Um, let's get it done. It, it's something that, that led to me shooting 58 today. Um, and obviously Team Crushers performed really well this week. Yeah. You guys are also made on the podium. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Did that factor into your mind at all today? Or yeah, you I mean, on? I, I was definitely trying to go as low as possible for the team. I, I knew they had it in them to, to go low as well. Uh, they're all great, uh, incredible professionals, and that's why they're on my team because um, I trust and believe in them, and I, I love all, all three of them. Um, I wouldn't change it for the world, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what, we, what kind of damage we can do moving, moving forward in the next three events. And how are you going to celebrate this win tonight? I have no idea. I have zero <laughs> clue, but I'm going to have a lot of fun. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. So happy Thank you. for you. I'm going to let Mike you. ask a couple. Yeah. So, Bryson, have you, have you ever broken 60 in any kind of practice round, fun? Round, so I, I have. When I was a junior, uh, when I was 15, 16, Mike Shy would tell me to go play the front tees and learn how to score. So I'd be driving in these tight areas and getting up and down, and my wedge game got really well, really good because of it, as well as my putting because it was stressful. Okay, I'm 10, 8 under, 9 under, right? Um, so I did that a lot growing up. And then I shot 59. I shot 59 at the, in the Pro-Am Shriners 20. 
20, I think, I think. Anyway, I went and shot Niner the next day. So it was, it was 59 and then like, what was it, like 61 or, or, or 62 the next day. Uh, so I played really well there at Shriner. So I have experience going low and then obviously Caves Valley uh, shooting 60. I'm having a putt for 59 and pulling that dang putt. Uh, I was able to, to step on 17 and go, okay, this is for 59. And I was able to conquer those nerves uh, on 17. And then 18 was just a bonus. So when did it first creep into your mind today? Was it after the sixth birdie? Was yeah, it earlier? Yeah, yeah. It, it was after I made birdie on seven. Right. And then I proceeded to make a nice little bogey on eight. <laughs> but then I backed it up with a couple birdies on nine, ten. Pulled the drive on eleven. Um, was a little afraid of missing it right for some reason. So uh, whatever, able to hit it up there close, and I almost made that putt on eleven. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have gone on a heater right. if I hadn't bogeyed eight and then made the birdie on eleven. Uh, birdie twelve, thirteen. I was just trying to stay right at that bunker um, up by the green, and I just pushed it a little bit. Almost made that actually. Fourteen. I left right in the heart, and then I just went on a heater the last last little bit. So when was it that you you said you actually thought about 54? When was that? Um, that that was actually right after the the first you know six out of seven. I was like, yeah. okay, if I like eagle one of the par fives <laughs> and I keep going at this pace, it's it could be dangerous. And and somebody said it was 58s aren't easy, but you were you were hitting it so close every time. Did you feel like this was? An easy 58 in that regard? Man, if there's any fee, f easy 58, I mean, I don't know who you're talking to. I, but, but it was certainly, in my mind, felt very simple to go 8, 9 under today with how I was hitting it and where, where I was hitting it and then how good I was putting it as well. Um, you know, if there's ever a time I could say that, I guess that's, this, is, this is the moment, but it doesn't come around very often, and i got to relish it. And then uh, <clears throat> Mito kept... You know, kept uh, I saw. the pressure on. Oh, I was watching. You know, Absolutely were. knew the whole day. And I saw him not letting off the pedal. I'm like, okay, I got to an answer. And uh, when I get in that mentality, it can get pretty scary for others. Did that, do you think that helped you in regards yeah. versus like just cruising with it? Oh, yeah, yeah. If there's nobody applying a little bit of pressure, I'd rather be close. I'd rather have it be, have it be like a shot off the, the lead or, or, or one shot ahead of, uh, of, the, of the guy in second, whatever. And not see the scoreboard for four or five holes. Because right. then I just like focus on, okay, I got a birdie, I got a birdie, I got a birdie, I got a birdie. It just allows me to get into a pretty dominant mindset. And then when the rain started, did you think that might impact? Oh, it did, it did impact right. some shots. Like the last hole, I tried to play like a little lower shot in there just to keep it down, kind of skip it up. And I skipped it up, but it just spun back. It was a lot of spin uh, that I produced on that shot. So. And, and can you just take us through your mindset on 18 as you uh, approach the putt? Well, as I approach the putt, I'm thinking, don't give myself a three-footer. <laughs> I was like, just get it as close as possible. And once we did the, you know, a bit of the calculations, I was like, all right, it's a 40-footer. And I hit a 40-footer to start off every single day in practice. And I know exactly what a 40-footer feels like. And so I just made that feeling, and I stroked it, and it was perfectly on line. Three-fourths away there, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this isn't going to go in, is it? And I'm like, this is 58, this is for 58, this is for 58, and then I you know, explode. So that was fun. And one last question for me. Um, we've talked about your driver change, talked yeah. about your putting. Are you surprised it happened so quickly? It was almost like you, you get the driver in the bag and all of a sudden 58. I think that's kind of how it happens in golf. For some reason, it's just, it just clicks. It's one round. It's one shot. Uh, it's one putt or, or, or something that just allows your mind to go, oh, I got it. And you can get right back on that train. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Open it up to Gus. Bryson, we talked the other day about just the impression that Live Golf leaves on the communities that it comes to. Considering your record performance and the, the great performances around you, mm -hmm. what kind of impression do you think you guys left upon Greenbrier in terms of perhaps returning to this place in years to come? Yeah, I hope people see the value that we bring to the community in regards to not only from um, just you know marketing sales, but, but an enjoyment factor. It's a party, right? We're having fun out here. We're selling tickets to Zach Brown. We're, we're doing things a little differently um, than most, and I think that uh, from a community impact and what it's done for the Greenbrier, I hope people see how positive uh, Live is for the game of golf in general. And that's what we're going to continue to do globally. Uh, I'm certainly excited about that. And uh, for this week, I think that the Greenbrier uh, was a tremendous venue. And uh, the volunteers, the people, everyone out here uh, were, were just incredible. And, and the atmosphere was electric. So I hope people see that. And you know, certainly excited to, to come back here, obviously. I mean, I shot 58, so I'd want to come back. <laughs> 
Uh, hey, Bryson. Akili from Drunk by the Turn. First off, I just want to say congrats. I Thank mean, you. Every time I show up to any of these events, you're the first one out there. And I'm surprised you're, you're probably going to be out on the range after this. But <laughs> no, if anybody deserves it, it's you. But yeah, I just want to know, um, for me personally, as a West Virginian, about an hour and 50 minutes from here, growing yeah. up, born and raised in Charleston, you know, we don't have many professional teams. We treat West Virginia University, all their sports like pro teams. And just to have something back like this in West Virginia, you know, through the rain, you know, what did you think of all the locals just sticking through it on 18 and just that roar when it just went yeah. in the hole? I mean, the passion that these fans have out here, um, they're looking for something. And I think that's why this is such a great venue. Uh, you got 12 teams out there to root for. You pick whoever you want. And then you've obviously got the individual side. So it gives people numerous opportunities to enjoy and have, have a unique experience. And, man, uh, Again, the fans were awesome on that last hole. Making that putt and seeing everybody just go nuts in that stadium sort of atmosphere was, was pretty electric. And also, I know you have been working with your new swing coach. Do you think, you know, how much is that accredited to your ball strike? I mean, your, your yeah. ball striking has been tremendous lately. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Has yeah, that I mean, he's definitely helped get me out of a, a bit of a rut. And, um, you know, Dane has been very helpful in the golf swing. And I think it just got to a point, too, where uh, a lot of it wasn't really me it was, it was a little bit of the equipment and once i changed the equipment everything kind of fit in and it was like oh okay this is this is what it is and so it's, it's been great but but danny has been awesome um he's helped me a lot and um you know his passion's there and and he's done a great job so safe to say you lived up to the great bobby bradley dick david let's go all right good luck thanks er brother thank you yeah, uh just curious there's so much history at this place golf and otherwise what does it mean to you to had the lowest round at this course and, you know, be obviously among the, you know, the top pieces of history now at the Greenbrier. Yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it. It's just happened uh, less than an hour ago, other than the fact um, Sam Sneed, um, my dad was fortunate enough to meet him uh, when he played the U.S. Mid-Am and, and it was in 2000, the year 2000. And so, you know, playing over here and getting to meet him, um, my dad talking to me about him and who he was as a person and what he meant to the game of golf was amazing and then obviously there's been a lot of great history uh, around this golf course and I always felt coming out here in 2016 20, or 2017 2018 2019 this golf course just fit my eye really really well and I'm like man I after 2019 I was like I want another chance at this I, I want another go at it and luckily uh, Liv was able to, to secure this and I was able to come back here and um, play the best golf I've played in a long long time with uh, a lot of the greats and uh, just having my place in history here is uh, something I'll cherish for the rest of my life thanks Bryson, congratulations, man. Thank you. Um, not that you needed any vindication, but does a moment like this and a performance like this vindicate your decision to, to join the Live Tour? And are you happy that, that this moment came with Live? Oh, a thousand percent. I, I can't thank Live enough for, for what they've done for men's professional golf. They have completely changed the narrative on what it means to be a professional golfer, how you can root for professionals, um, how you can enjoy the game of golf differently. And, uh, you know, their vision has been always intriguing to me. And obviously going through with it, seeing what it's all about, even if I had never won a live event, it was still amazing what live was doing to impact communities around the world globally and grow the game of golf. I mean, it, it, people say that that's not what they're doing. I really think over the course of time, they're going to continue to grow the game of professional golf uh, globally. And I'm, I'm excited for that. And you see the case, you know, the case here at Greenbrier, it's, um, definitely showcasing a unique experience uh, for a lot of fans with you know, um, live entertainment uh, a couple nights ago and with Zach Brown. And um, I don't know what else to say other than thank you to Liv for everything they've done. And it was, uh, it's been an amazing ride, and I can't wait to see what the next decade and couple decades uh, bring. Thanks. Hey, Bryson, congrats, man. Thank you. Uh, 6158 back to back. Um, unbelievable. You, yeah. you had mentioned Sam Sneed getting to meet him. You mentioned your father. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think maybe both of their spirits were kind of shining yeah. down here today and helping yeah, you? I mean, it's definitely. I mean, anytime I talk about my dad, it's he would have. I mean, I know he's watching. I know he's proud. I know he's smiling up there. And um, I really wasn't thinking too much of it. I had a job to do. But after. Uh, Afterwards, you know, when I made that putt and then sat over there on the side, I'm like, man, I, I wish my dad could have been here, but I, I know he was watching it, and um, it was really cool to to have this moment. But it, it it really wasn't about me in that moment. It was more of 
he, he, he's given his whole life for me. My, my dad gave everything to have me be the best I possibly could be. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's a reason, there's a reason why all this happened. And, um, I understand it now and I, and I thank God and I thank my dad for everything he did for me. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Bryson. Congratulations. Thank you.